The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the March 22nd, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. We knew I make that one little two by four shift means we can find the gift into it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I will go check on the circumstances of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. Look, if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers. Then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, you got all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. The Dow up 282 points, 8 tenths. S&P 1%, 1.1%. That's 49 points. The NASDAQ 251, 1 to 3 quarters percent. 8 tenths for the Russell. That's 16. Semis are up about 8 tenths or 26 bucks. Tranny's up 6 tenths, 92 bucks out there. You've got uh, the spot politics trading lower, targeting its uh, lower Bollinger Band reading. Gold is off $10. 1919.50 is the print. 1920.60 is the bottom of its daily profile, so it's testing profile support. Uh, silver trading just below the bottom of its daily profile. I believe that's around 24.95. It's trading out at 24.87. Lights be crude down two dollars and thirty-four cents. 109.78 is the print there. Natural gas up a nice 23 pennies, trading right up into a prior swing point. If you take that out, we've got a breakout message for it. The 30-year Treasury back one full point and eight ticks. 148.12 is the print. Uh, we'll take a look at that. I believe today is day number nine of a. TD9 count, or maybe it's the day following uh, bar number nine. Uh, but we'll take a look at that. It says that you could see a bottom form maybe, maybe as early as today, today or tomorrow. But we'll go back and get the counts. We'll make sure we get those things right out there. As far as what's leading the charge dollar wise, you've got Google, 81 bucks, nearly 3%. Amazon, 74, a little over 2%. Mercado Libre up $61, 5%. Shopify, 45 bucks, nearly 7%. Booking Holdings, 32 bucks, 1.5%. To the downside, it's Oak to Inc. down three percent or five bucks. Arch Resources five bucks three percent. CVR Partners five bucks three and a half percent. Eli Lilly five bucks one and a half percent. So we've got things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. There are no requests as we speak right now. So let's just simply go take a look at the uh, ES Mini. We'll switch uh, panels out here. We'll take a look at our eight panel screen. Momentarily, we'll have that up for you in the upper left-hand side. We will begin by taking a look at the monthly time frame. Again, on the monthly time frame, you've got a TD9 count top. Price below that green oscillator and change line. So you've got a uh, bearish to neutral type signal, what we'll call it. In the case of the ES Mini, it formed a road momentum indicator top, took price back to its breakout level, 41.26. And now what price is trying to do or targeting where it's likely headed to is the oscillator and change line. And that's currently printing, I would speak right now, at about 45.13. Price is at 4,500. Now, if price were to close the week, not Tuesday, not Wednesday, but on Friday, if price were to close above that level, that would be very bullish for the ES Mini. Now, when I say very bullish, that would suggest that we should see higher price. 
We don't have that yet. That could be or should be where a counter trend move would uh, peter out. Now, if we take a look at the daily time frame on the white background charts, we certainly can see that price is above the top of its profile and likely targeting 45.14. Close above 45.14, which is the TD9 count breakdown level, that would suggest higher price. Now, we'd say higher price to where? Well, we've got that 45. Uh, so that was 45.14, and the oscillator change on the week is 45. 12, so that takes care of both of those. So where would the next move take us to? I'd have to say back to the prior swing point in the 45.57 level, back on the February 9th-ish type time frame out there. If we look for intraday type signals out here, we've got, well, I take that back. We have one topping pattern. I guess there's a buy the D, a sell the D point on the 30 minute chart, um, which took price right back to support. So if price is able to close above today's high, that negates that signal. The 60 minute has a TD9 count that uh, took place as we came into the noon time frame. Uh, if price closes above that high, it negates that. This is still a neutral signal on a 60 minute basis because price is above that green oscillator and change line. So you've got a top, but you've got uh, price get rising price oscillator above zero. That is a bullish condition. I do see wave number seven that uh, may form here on the two-hour time frame chart. So there are a couple more topping signals than I initially thought, but still nothing has broken through support. The real key level for support inside the ES Mini, it's all the way back down at the 4440 level. I'm not saying that's where price is headed to, I'm just saying that would be a key level of support out there. So that's our look. How do we summarize the ES Mini out here? Look, short-term topping signals, no key levels have been uh, broken. Maybe price pulls back into the 4487. 4489 ish type area out there but if price is able to close above that 4514 level that says we've got more movement to the upside inside of the es mini let's go take a look at the charts for the nq see what kind of clarity we can get from those day uh those uh those charts. Again, we begin by taking a look at the monthly time frame. You've got a TD9 count top, took price back towards, but not to its breakout level of 12207. Whereas in the weekly chart, which has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, price did come down and test and reject its breakout level at the 13462 level. It also created a TD9 count bottom. Now the NQ is taking on the resistance level. We're going to try to take on the resistance level of its weekly oscillator and change line. That says we should see a price move up to 14,722. At 14,771 is the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. And at 14,865 is the top of the profile that has been generated by my white background charts out there. So to summarize this, in order to get a breakout message inside the NQ, it would have to see a close above 14,865. And if you get that, uh, you're going to be above the weekly oscillator and change line. That's going to suggest to move up to the 15,636 level. We don't have that signal. These are just simply the levels to watch. You know the battlegrounds ahead of time. We can clearly delineate those. And that way you know what is going on. We'll take a look at what's going on on an intraday basis out here. The only topping signal is a 60-minute chart. Well, again, I'll take that back. I see an A to B equals CD on the 30-minute chart. Price might pull back to 14,557. A close below that would say we're headed to 14,538. 14,538 is the oscillator and change line for the 60-minute time frame chart that does have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. But again, if we take out today's high, take out today's highs, those signals fail, and what they would be then suggesting is that move to 14,771. Don't see anything else inside the NQ there to pay attention to. Just as long as we're on this page, we've got a few seconds here. I'll just throw up the gold charts. So we take a look at Goldilocks. Not really going to see a whole lot here, uh, other than price just hovering around the bottom of its daily profile. And that's in that 1920 level out there. On the intraday charts, what do we see? As Stevie likes to say, not much. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. 
and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow's. All, all the U.S. indices are trading the upside. Dow's up 283. S&P is 47. And uh, when we went to that break, I had mentioned I didn't see much in the way of gold, but I take that back now. I've looked at the 30-minute time frame chart. It has a butterfly buy pattern. It's an A to B equals CD. Pattern of the downside, it was an expansion of the swing point from 10 o'clock in the morning on March the 21st. That was yesterday. So now that we've got to buy the D point, you're also inside a very wide-ranging profile from a 30-minute perspective, bullish in structure. And this suggests that price should make its way to 1926. Now, odds favor that move as long as price remains above its red oscillator and change line. 191980 is the print. We're trading at 1920 right now. So if price could hold this level, we should see price take on the 1926 level. Maybe it gets above that. Maybe it doesn't, but that's its target area. And that is the only thing, really, that I see on the time frame chart, on the multi-time frame charts for Goldilocks out there. Let's go to our first question. First question coming in from Hector and the fuel injectors. That would be Patty. And Hector wants to take a look at ticker symbol WFC. That is Wells Fargo out here. What we're going to do is put up our eight panel charts for Wells Fargo. WFC, again, is a ticker symbol. And let me see what the question actually is. Happy Taco 2 for Tuesday. You've got it. Wells Fargo and Exxon Mobil. Do they still have the upward mojo? So great question. The mojo is dealing with the sellers right now in uh, Wells Fargo. Hector, that's right at the top of its daily profile. So let's open up the daily time frame screen. And the snipers, so to speak, are sitting right here at exactly 53.40. And price is trading at 53.40. So really, it's going to be the uh, you're asking, uh, does uh, do, do buyers in essence still have the mojo? You're going to find out today. If price now volume wise, what I can share with you is uh, it has done so far about 16 million shares. Now, the B point of an A to B equals CD would be the March 16th time frame. 
hectare, and that had 34 million shares. So it's not taking out the B point width volume. Doesn't mean that it's not going to form an A to B equals C D, but that's a potential. But first, the battleground is at this 5340 level. And not that if it can't take it out, doesn't mean it doesn't have its mojo, but it certainly doesn't have the volume you'd be looking for to take out that mojo. But if it did find that mojo, then what you'd be looking at is move to 59.32. That's based upon the daily time frame chart pattern signals. That's its TD9 count breakdown level. On a weekly time frame, we can see that Wells Fargo also trading into resistance. That happens to be its green oscillator and change line. So much like we were taking a look at in the ES and the NQ, 50, now that's at 54, thir, well, that's at, yeah, it's at 54.30. So that would be a real key level that if price can close above that, now we've changed it from the 53.40 level to the 50. 431 area, the price really needs to close above to then really get a signal to you that it's got its mojo and a move back to at least 56.35 out there. If we look at the other Wells Fargo charts, things still look bullish. I mean, look at the monthly time frame. No uh, topping uh, pattern here. If anything, you've got a breakout message that it wants to move to higher ground. It gave you that message the month of January when price closed above its TD9 count top. And uh, but what hasn't done is taken out that 5404 level. That's a TD9 count breakdown level on the monthly basis. But nonetheless, that uh, price did pull back this month, tested and rejected its green oscillator and change line. That was after it recently changed color. So the the longer term time frame here, Hector, uh, does say that it has its mojo. Price just dealing with these resistance levels out here, and you've got the daily, so you know what's going on there. On an intraday basis, I don't really see much here to be paying attention to, at least at this stage. So I hope that helps you and Patty out with regard to Wells Fargo. Now let's go ahead and try to populate these charts here for Exxon Mobil. This may take a moment. Well, I, not, not that it may take a moment. It will take a moment as it churns through all the calculations for those different four time frames out there. But what I can say is that Exxon Mobil, both yesterday and today, are trading above the top of, or by the bottom of a daily profile. As a daily profile that formed yesterday or a couple of days ago, you can see it right here. And the bottom of that profile is at the 8083 level. Now, what you want to see here, Hector, you know, to answer, well, first, let's just open up the daily time frame chart. Exxon Mobil forms a TD9 count top, does it on bar number eight, price pulls right back to its breakout level of 7620. That's the buy area. That was March 16th. And now what price is dealing with is resistance. It dealt with one resistance level yesterday, the bottom of that profile, 8083. Now the next area that it's dealing with is that green oscillator and change line. If price can close above that, currently that's printed to 8263, you then should see a move up to its bearish structure daily profile. So those snipers are really sitting, Hector and Patty, between 8541 and 8693. So it had its mojo. Price pulled back, did what it was supposed to do, tested support. That is still bullish out here. And now you've just got the battle going on between the bulls and the bears. We know exactly where they're situated. If I look at a 130-minute chart, you do have a TD9 count top. That says that if price can close above 82.51, that would be negated and suggest to move to 86.23. Price above the oscillator and change line, so it's really a neutral signal for that. You've got a Rhodes momentum indicator top on the 30-minute chart out here. No real bottom signal per se, but if price can get back above 82 bucks, then a false breakdown will have uh, formed. Otherwise, on a 30-minute basis, you could make the case that this is going to try to pull back to 78.53 out there. Um, I'd be more focused on the 130-minute chart right now than I would on the 30-minute time frame chart. So, Hector and Patty, that's what I see on a uh, Taco 2 for Tuesday. Thanks much for writing in. Haven't heard from you for a few days, so uh, glad to hear from you. Of course, folks, I would love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 is the call-in number. No request as we have at the moment. I don't see anything inside the Tiger's Den. If there was a request that was uh, put in there, would you please just retype that, and we'll immediately get to that. In the meantime, we'll go take a look at some other things. Well, no, JNJ. &J. Okay, so that's coming from uh, G7, JNJ, uh, &J, Johnson & Johnson. So we'll take a look at that. That's going to go ahead and populate here. Take a, a moment. But in the meantime, I can share with you that Johnson and J N J. Stevie, learn how to type. JNJ. &J. There we go. Uh, 
Johnson in Johnson has a new profile out here at G7. Your resistance level, or the top, I should say, is at 177.16. The bottom is your support level, and that is at 171.71. Now, the area you really want to pay attention to, because this is a bearish structure daily profile, is 174.43. Odds would favor, if there's a close below that, that sellers would have the strength to push it down to support, again, which is that 171.71 level. The monthly time frame has a TD9 count, which has really led to a sideways consolidation with inside its profile, and that's in essence between 160 and 174.23. The weekly time frame chart out here, I don't see much of anything. Well, I take that back. We open it up, we see a TD9 count top. That was at its high back in August. So it looks like that is where price is going to target. Now, uh, on a separate screen, I'm just going to take a look at the volume. The volume on that swing point from back on August the 16th, this is the weekly time frame, or the week that began August 16th, was 29 million shares. Last week, you moved into it with 49 million shares. Now, you tested and rejected it. When you test and reject something with the volume, says you're going to be back up there. Well, that's what it's doing this week. This week, you're at 10 million shares. Um, not bad for a uh, Tuesday because you're really going into 29 million shares. So what it looks like Johnson & Johnson is doing is really pushing up in that swing point to suggest that it wants to go test that swing point high, that TD9 count. Now, if it took that out, that would be a very bullish outcome. Coming back to the daily time frame chart out here for Johnson & Johnson, what do we have? We had a TD9 count that was uh, negated on uh, March 15th, so that looks pretty good too. Uh, G7. So what you've got going on here is just simply a battle of where the sellers reside. That's pretty simple. That's right up at the 177.16 or 174.23. Otherwise, all looks good. Possible double top? Yeah, sure, but price wants to move up this way to meet right now. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even 
give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go to our caller. It's uh, going to be uh, we're in the second here. Let me see who's got line. We've got uh, Gary. Hey, Gary, in New Buffalo, Michigan. Gary, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hey, Steve-O. Gary, uh, good to talk to you. How are you doing? I'm doing uh, great. Nice to hear from you. How's the weather up in Michigan today? What are we missing? Well, it's funny you, you ask. Uh, yesterday it was 50, and it was beautiful. I'm in, over in Chicago today, and uh, it's turning blustery and cold and supposed to maybe snow by the weekend. <laughs> oh, okay, so, all right, good. You, you remember those good day, good uh, spring days, right? <laughs> absolutely, yeah, it was uh, absolutely. So winter's not over. Uh, but it's, you know, yeah. it's, it's probably, we're probably getting there, don't you think? Yeah, we're obviously getting there. Yesterday was just beautiful. It was a good no, one of those no, spring days. The real days question, I know, the, the real question so is... Special. Yeah, the real question is, uh, I'm sure that you're going to ask, is is winter over for the uh, 30-year Treasury? The TLT, I think, is what you're calling about. So uh, tell the yeah. folks uh, what you're looking at, how I could best help you. Well, I've got, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, I do a lot of macro stuff and, and reading, and I apologize. I, I'm in and out today, so I'm, um, uh, you may have already covered it a bit, but I, I'd heard you had an opening, so I just wanted to kind of go over it. Get yes. your thoughts and see where you think it's headed in the maybe the longer term, you know, here in the next say, three to six months, if you want to, you know, look at that, if there's any indications in the monthly chart or things like that. Well, well, we, we I've got the 30-year treasury up on the screen. I've got my synthetic version of the contract so that we can take a look at the actual profiles for longer periods of time. And right now, the news is that price is below the daily, weekly, and monthly profile level. So that's not a good scene. That then takes me over to a quarterly time frame. And Gary, on the quarterly time frame, the price target to the downside would be 138.22. We're trading at 148.11. Now, that's what the bigger picture looks like. Whether we get down there or not will probably be proven tomorrow or the next day. And the reason is I'm going to go ahead, and even though you're, you're, on, you're, you're listening, when you go back, you can take a look at the archive on this. And, and that is I'm going to put up my white background charts, and we're going to see on the daily time frame here that today is the day following bar number nine. So as it's making a low out here, it is going to complete a TD9 count pattern today. So. You should see a, at least a bounce from here. That bounce should take price up where 148.11 should take price up to about 151 and a half or so. What's I would say that would be the target. But the cool thing here is that if we see tomorrow, if we see a close below today's low, whatever that ends up being, or we see a close below today's low the next day, that will tell us about that this pattern will have been negated or failed and tell us about a strong moment to move to the downside and then gary that 138.22 level would become the target i could draw in a to b equals cd patterns but no reason for me to do that at this moment because we have that price target to the downside of 138.22 now typically when you form any questions so far i know you're just listening uh, or maybe you're watching on Tiger TV on your phone. Could be. Even. No, I, I, no, I've got, I, I, I don't have it on my phone at this yeah. point. But I'm just nope. listening. But no, not at this point. Okay. So uh, typically, Gary, when we see a daily time frame that gets to a resistance or a support level, in this case here, we're hoping support level from, from the standpoint of forming a bottoming pattern. We like to see intraday time signals say, okay, yeah, you got a, a daily bottom. You should see the turns become, uh, forming in the intraday charts. Well, the 30-minute chart does have a confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom. So that took place this morning at 10.30. Now, price hasn't really done much out here. It's just traded sideways. Uh, but you at least have a bottoming signal that's present. We don't have one on the 60-minute. That needs a bullish reversal candle. We don't have one on the 120. That needs a bullish reversal candle. You do have a TD9 count bar that's formed on the 240. So you've got a bottoming signal there. So we've got bottoming signals on the 30 and on the 240. And you could even get one on the five-hour chart because this is going to be bar number eight out here. So the answer to your question, I think, will be revealed to you and I tomorrow. 
Um, right now, it's got the potential for a bottom, but not enough, certainly not enough to take a trade. Uh, and I think you, you wait until you get those type of signals. Uh, but again, if we see a close below today's low, whatever that is, that tells us that the 30-year uh, Treasury is headed south. And I would say the next target will be 138.22. Is that specific enough for you? That's actually great. Uh, it just gave me the numbers I need to kind of watch. So we're looking for a close below today's low. Uh, if if we have that, then we're um, you know in trouble as far as if you're long, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, and and so so far, and I don't know what today's low will be, but so far it's 148.05. So and again, I, I think we're we're best to take our decisions from the uh, from the actual 30-year Treasury than we are by taking a look at the TLT. So that's that's what I would be looking at. Um, and uh, and I'd be looking at the 30-year Treasury charts, you know, overnight, early in the morning. You'll, you'll you should sort of get a good feel for whether or not we've made a turn or not. At least a a, a viable bounce type turn that could take us to the 151 level. Okay, I, I may call at the end of the week. I've got another question for you, but I'll leave it for the other the end of the week, and we can nah, maybe cut back, back, back nah. in this. Look, you, you're but, welcome um, to ask now. You're welcome what? to ask now. We don't. I don't have any other requests or anything. Oh, you don't? Okay. Nope. Um, I believe it's a TMF. The um, No, let's finish this, though. My one question on this is, the TLT, the way I've read through the makeup, it isn't, I wish it was just the 30-year. I would it's really not. like to be doing more with just the 30-year versus the mixing it up with the 10 and, and some of the other stuff that's in the TLT. Um, is there another instrument that I'm missing that would just have the 30-year um straight that you're aware of you know what i mean as opposed to the tlt which has a mixture no you hey first of all thank you for doing your homework on it okay which you have done and you are correct it's just not the 30-year treasury that is inside there a 30-year treasury is one that's closest for us to be able to make uh, those types of decisions so they're they right. you know you're, you're you're absolutely right about that I do have the TLT up on my screen right now. So if we were just gonna, if we were not going to pay attention to the 30-year, uh, here we don't have wave number. We don't have a TD nine count bottom. We do have a potential wave number seven, letter G, but uh, we need to see a higher low. And you do have a Rhodes momentum indicator signal triggered for the daily time frame. And that would need a bullish reversal candle. If we did get a bounce whether it's a 30-year or coming from the TLT, that says that the counter trend move should find resistance at about 131.91. That's on the TLT out there. But it's a great question that you asked. Um, and, uh, and no, the, the closest thing that uh, I've been able to find, and I think most others have been able to find, is to pay attention to that 30-year for its signals out there. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. It was just that um, some of the macro stuff I've... Um you know, um, it is just such a divergence as who controls the 10 year versus who, you know, the the more um, the 30 year and what goes on in that. So, anyway, well, cool. To, uh, on the macro from, stuff, yeah. sure. On the macro stuff, Gary, I think the one big macro piece you've got to really consider here is if we take a look at what's going on geopolitically, we know <laughs> that uh, the actions of the U.S. Uh, had, that they've taken against uh, Russia. Uh, have been to uh, to uh, provide all kinds of sanctions, go after all kinds of people's uh, personal money and assets out there. And uh, so the signal's been sent to uh, China that if you do something we don't like, Taiwan-related, Russia-related, uh, we're going to go ahead and confiscate your assets as well. So what you've got to be aware of is that the uh, second largest holder of U.S. Treasuries is China. And so the signal to China is to sell, 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 and certainly sell into every rally out there. So, Gary, if you believe that China might take some type of move over Taiwan, um, trading the uh, the 30 year treasury of the upside could be a very dangerous thing. So I'll just leave you with that. Thank I hear the music in the background. Always great to speak to you. We'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. That's Gary in New Buffalo, Michigan. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value 
or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. question here from Peter in Park City. Peter says, uh, Steve, with the strength in the uh, FANG stocks, has the New York Stock Exchange advanced decline oscillator chart shown any weakness compared to last week? I happen to put that chart up on our screen here preparing for Peter's question. Mr. Bill in the Tiger's Den made a uh, comment. He said, hey, Steve, uh, you've been looking at the advanced decline oscillator line on my chart. Uh, bigger moves up after a retest of the 150 value. And so what he's picking up on here. So first of all, and we're looking at panel number two, where you see the yellow horizontal lines. You'll see a plus 150, a minus 150, and a minus 250. The 150 levels are when the New York Stock Exchange moves into its either oversold or overbought condition. So we're in an overbought condition, being above plus 150. Now, the other piece of information, when we see a close above plus 150, what that tells us is we should see higher highs in the future. Now, it turns out that right now we are seeing higher highs. So first to answer your question, Peter, which was there any weakness compared to last week? And the answer is yes, at the moment. Today. Today is that first signal because we still see a higher high in price but we see a lower high in the advanced decline oscillator. That sets up a divergent pattern out there. Now, one day of divergence does not mean, you know, go ahead and pull the triggers and load up the truck and uh, go, uh, go short. But yes, we're beginning to see a divergence. I have other divergences on my screen noted here. We can see that those divergences will typically lead to some type of retracement out there. Sometimes they're deeper. So how do we know when uh, this is going to give us some type of signal? We have to look at a number of different charts. Here, because we are looking at the New York Stock Exchange, that would be certainly one chart to take a look at. 
As we take a look at it, we can see that the New York Stock Exchange is strong. It is in bar number five of a TD9 count. It formed with a gigantic uh, Rhodes-Mintum indicator bottom and TD9 count on February 24th. I mean, that is a gigantic hammer candle. That held. Now with the New York Stock Exchange, we don't have a topping pattern out here, Peter and Mr. Bill. And uh, this would suggest to me that what price is going to try to do is get up to the 16.969. So the question is, will the advanced decline oscillator continue with that diverging pattern? You're also only in bar five of a TD9 count. I don't know if that will be the topping pattern, but if it were to be the topping pattern, we've got uh, three to six sessions. Uh, left before we would see that. So that says even next week, Peter, before we could use that. But to answer your question and to answer Mr. Bill's question, there is a divergence that is beginning. Those divergences typically lead to some type of retracement. But what you like to see is some kind of top. For example, let's just see. I, I mean, I don't know this, but back in January, January 4th, we had a uh, a similar diverging pattern out there. And if we try to come back to January the 4th, well, it turns out, January 4th was bar number nine of a TD9 count. Now, folks, I did not know that. I did not do this ahead of time. I'm not pulling, you know, I'm just, you know, something out of my, you, you know what. It's just typically when we see those divergent patterns, when they really have meaning is when we get a topping signal. And in fact, in the New York Stock Exchange, that's what we did last time. That's what we typically do, not always. So we also want to pay attention, or I want to pay attention to what's going on in the equity future contracts as well. But to, not to belabor the point, but we have the beginning. Just the beginning of a divergence. I don't know whether it's going to turn into anything or not. It doesn't appear that today is the day, but it could be. Hey, we're in kind of like wartime stuff, and uh, you know, so anything can happen. But uh, you do have that spot volatility below its 50-day exponential moving average. As long as we're here, let's go take a look at that. That should go target that lower Bollinger Band. It's pretty close to it. The lower Bollinger Band is at 22.21. We're trading right now at 22.90 out here. Um, Price inside the ES Mini, I think we talked about this. It's above the top of its weekly profile right now. So that's really kind of a bullish, mess, a bullish message out here as we speak. Uh, so, yes, you've got the divergence, but nothing to take action on as we speak right now. But definitely something that we want to keep our eyes on. So thank you to both of you for just simply uh, making that request or pointing that out. Now, no other requests. Oh, I take that back. We've got one here from Jim who wants to take a look at Platinum. Jim, thanks for writing in. And make sure what chart we're on. We're in the black background. Where would we buy? Where would be? A, where would a buy point be? Is this question? So, let me do this here. Let me get over to the platinum charts. So take just a moment. So we take a look at platinum. We are trading the. Uh, we're trading the April contract still. So I'm going to go over to my other chart. Just takes me a moment here to set this up and uh, those top and bottom uh, eight panel screens out here. So let me get Platinum, April, uh, get that going here, and then we'll evaluate what the uh, black background charts are telling us. So the answer to your question, though, Jim, specifically, I would say the buy point would be at around 1,280. That is the bottom of its bullish structured weekly profile. That has been tested. Now, it's a weekly profile, but it's a daily time frame that we're looking at as far as the candlesticks are concerned. So that was tested, rejected on March 15th. It was tested, rejected on March 16th out there. That was also a rising trend line. So it could be the rising trend line if we're going to get granular out here. I mean, it could today that would be at about 989. Tomorrow will be just slightly higher than that. Maybe it's 990 or so. I would just go with the 1002 level as a potential for your buy point out here for platinum. Let's go change over to our white screens to see if there's any additional information that we can provide Jim with here. Uh, there we go. So you should have those screens out there. And now what we're looking for, I'm just looking for some kind of signal out here for you. So no topping signal, no, uh, uh, well, yeah, no topping, look, I, I, yeah, just no topping signal. I'm, I'm kind of focused, I, I, I apologize for the delay there. I'm, I'm really looking at the 195 minute chart. It does have wave number seven top out there, price is below the bottom of that profile. So that says you could see a further pullback, but at the same time, the 65 minute chart here generated a TD nine count bottom. So I guess those would be the two time frames that I would be paying attention to. You've got a TD9 count bottom on a 65-minute uh, basis. The top of the profile is 1025. You're above that. 
That says if price wants to go target 1031. If price tests and rejects the 1031 level, Jim, that would then suggest a pullback or retracement. In that case there, right now, that level I'd be looking at is about 1023 or so out there. So our buy points are between 1002 and 1023 at the uh, moment, 1025. Yeah, right, right in that, uh, right in that zone. So that's the best I've got for you for platinum. And again, I would watch the 65-minute time frame chart, see how price, if it does, and it should be able to get up to that 1031 level. It doesn't have to. I'm not saying it has to do it today. Um, it should be able to get up to that area. Now, the only thing that holds it from doing that. Nah, it should really be able to do that. That's the move it should be able to make. If it gets above that, then you've missed the buy point. The buy point would have then been this morning on that 65-minute time frame, and that would have come in at 11.20 or so. Or it really wouldn't. You wouldn't have gotten that confirmation until 12.25 out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at Platinum, Jim. Thanks so much for writing in. I do hope that that helps you out. Delete this there. Let's see if there's any other questions that have come in. I believe the answer is uh, no. I think we are uh, good out here. So we're about to go to a uh, break, last break before we do the two-minute wrap-up here. Let's change back to the uh, black background screens, see if there's anything here that we need to be paying attention to. Uh, there's our platinum chart. Let me come back and, oh, there was a caller on the line. Didn't see that. My apology, uh, Ron. Ron, I'll try to figure out what it was that you were calling about. My apology, I didn't see you on the uh, line out there. And uh, if I can find out what you were calling about, I'll most certainly cover that. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. 
For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to Denver and speak with Bron. Bron, thanks for calling back. Thanks for holding. Uh, how are you? Great, Steve. Feeling great. Uh, Excellent. <laughs> just wondered, on Air Products, Apple, Paul, David, APD. Yes. Yep. Uh, huge insider buy, 280,000 shares on Friday, and then they raise their dividend. And the stock made a good move yesterday and pulled back a little bit. Does it look like, would it be too late to get involved in, say, you know, uh, about a month, go out of a month on a on a call, on calls? Well, uh, let's let's see what the stock chart tells us. So, first of all, price ran into uh, buzzsaw resistance yesterday, which is a group of sellers. Those sellers resided at the top of its profile, uh, daily profile. That's at 236.73, and then at 235.76 was the TD9 count breakdown level. So, a ton of sellers, not unusual to see yesterday's price action. As we look at this chart here for the entire uh, for the entire 2022 season, APD Air Products uh, and Chemicals has not been able to close above the top of a daily profile. Your question is, is it too late to get inside this no, but to really prove itself to you, you know, do you buy right here at resistance where it's sitting right at the top of that daily profile? Your better buy, if you wanted to get into it, Ron, I would say be, would be between 227 and 229. You're 235 right now. If price does close above the top of that profile, that's a signal that, okay, this has got some juice and it should be able to make a run to 245. And above 245, your target round would be 251.38. 251.38 is the top of the weekly profile. What questions do you have based on that information while well, we have just about 20 seconds? Okay, you say the best way to get involved is about down to 229. Um, if it didn't go that far, okay, uh, what, where would be a breakout to, point to get in on the upside? Yeah, a breakout would be two consecutive closes above 236.73. And you're 235 two thirty five ninety three. Okay. Yes. So just Thank remember. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. It, you bet. This has not been above the top of a uh, daily profile since about uh, December of 2021. Hey, Ron. Thanks much for calling and calling back. I really appreciate that, folks. Stay tuned for two more great hours. I'll be back with you tomorrow on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday. Thanks again for joining us.